Okay then, so we're at stage one of the ring final circuit test. It's got three stages and we're looking at stage one first. Conductors are disconnected from the consumer's unit for the ring final circuit under test. Um, because they're in singles, we've also identified a set. In this case, we've identified one set with one piece of tape and one set with two pieces of tape. So we can distinguish them later on in the testing. First of all, what we're going to do is jingle end-to-end -end little R1, little Rn and little R2, which is populated in our test paperwork here at college, but also is populated in any test paperwork out there in the real world. We're going to record it as little R1, little Rn and little R2 before going on at the next stage to perform the two calculations. So we first of all do little R1, end-to-end -end on the cables, instruments set up on continuity, and our reading is... When it comes down, going to be 0 0.11 ohms. Okay. We expect a similar reading when we move to the CP, sorry, to move to the neutrals. As little r n. And this time we got 0 0.11. We discussed it earlier on. We discussed the fact that the conductor size is equal and the length is equal, so our reading should be very similar. We've wired in singles, so our little r2 reading. Okay, he's also in 2.5 cable for this ring circuit, so also should give us a very similar reading. We've got that as 0.12 ohms. Okay, we have suggested that once we're looking at twin and CPC cables with a reduced 1.5 millimeter squared conductor size, that we're 1.67 times greater than the readings we would have got on the live conductors. So that's stage one of the ring final circuit test. Stage two of the ring final circuit test required us before we started it to do some calculations. In this job, we didn't get the same readings as previously stated of 0 0.11 end to end readings. This job now we're testing, we got 0 0.06, all three readings were the same, conductor size was the same, length was the same. We went on and did a calculation for uppercase or R1 plus Rn, made up of little r1 and little rn, which was 0 0.06, added to 0 0.06, divided by 4. And we discussed about the dividing by 4 before we started the video itself. We calculated our um, R1 plus Rn reading to be 0.03. Remembering, according to the on-site guide and the regulations, we can vary by 0.05 up or down from that value. Our readings are olympically low compared to the real world because our circuit is very small in length. We've gone to the consumer unit. We've got our line and neutral conductors connected on opposites. So we've taken line conductor and linked it to its opposite neutral, neutral conductor and linked it to its opposite line conductor. See how opposite line and opposite neutral are connected together within the connector block. Our first measurement in the bit that we always forget is always taken from the connection within the consumer's unit. And we're going across one connected block to the other connected block. And our reading comes out at 0 0.02. Our calculated reading was 0 0.03. And we're within the tolerance 0 0.05 up or down from that reading. It's the first bit. Now we've got to change to our plug-in tester itself, get rid of the probes, requires us to take these out. And the bit that we tend to forget is which connections to use. We're testing line and neutral, so we're going to need, need our blue and red connections, but as before stated, we're going to need to still be in the red and green sections of our tester. So we're measuring line and neutral at each of our outleted points. Take the blade of our knife, link it across the term, two conductors line in neutral, and we'll zero out our leads. Just try that again. Okay. And we're going to go to each socket outlet and turn on both sides. We won't record the reading. This is partly proving polarity, partly proving continuity of ring final circuits. However, we are going to have both these calculations from stages two and three appear on our paperwork. And as we move towards our next course, we will populate it perhaps on the back of our testing paperwork as well. So we're going to keep them, but not record them on the actual test result sheet itself. Okay, so we need line and neutral first. And 0.03, 0.02. .0 we're flicking around a little bit here. So we'll zero them again. Just try them again. Zero them out again. Let's try them again. Let's see if we get better reading. So we've got 0 0.03, turn off the outlet itself, it's part polarity testing, take it out, plug it to the other side of the socket. 0 0.03, turn it off. But you have to operate the switch on both sides of the socket outlets for polarity purposes. We're part proving polarity of the pins, 
part proving its wide is a ring final circuit. Moving on to this next socket, exactly the same process again. We've got 0.03 and the outlet goes off. To the next side, fraction high there. Got a choice now, we've got to take the front off itself and probe into the back, or potentially because the sockets haven't been used many times, perhaps a couple of insert and reinsert can get the reading down to a more realistic red level, 0.03 and it goes off. The final one on the ring final circuit for us. So again, let's perhaps we'll try and insert again. 0.03, does it go off? And then on the final one. 0.03, 0.02, fell out of zero again. And we go off itself. All of those are on the ring final circuit and we expect to get a reading within 0.05 of the calculated reading. This circuit, this socket is taken from the circuit as a spur and we'll have a slightly higher reading. We've got 0.03 and it goes off. Again, and we've got 0.06 on that side and then goes off. None of those readings are recorded on our test paperwork. We're just going to do that as part continuity ring final circuit and part polarity. Take through the ring final circuit test now. We've got linked in our consumer's unit opposite line and opposite CPC, opposite line and opposite CPC. And from our calculation carried out earlier, we got a reading of 0.03 to be found at the connector and any socket outlet on the ring final circuit itself. This test will complete to prove it's wired as a ring final circuit. It will complete polarity and it will also give us the reading R1 plus R2 for our continuity of CPC. So this will finish it off at stage three. As before, the first reading is taken from inside the connector block itself. And we've got a reading of 0 0.04. See how the opposite line is connected to the opposite CPC within the connector block. Okay, reading of 0 0.03 with a tolerance of plus or minus 0 0.05. So that one's acceptable. And change back over to the other lead, which has been giving me some issues as we go around. Still using the green and red holes within the MFT itself, and we are on the green and red connectors because we're using line and CPC. This is what's been giving me a bit of grief. Zeroing this out. Okay, we'll try that. Going to go to each socket turn on the ring final circuit and expect to get a reading of 0 0.03 plus or minus 0 0.05. We've got a spurred socket from the ring final circuit, so maybe the reading will be slightly higher when we get to that. Of all the readings we get, we'll record the highest one that we achieve. <coughs> First reading, 0 0.04. Must check the switch is operational for polarity. Socket goes off. Let's go to the other side of the socket outlet as we did before. The switch could have failed on this side. We've got 0 0.0. Socket goes off. Move on to the next one. And the socket goes off. A bit of issues with the readings. It's got 0 0.07 this time. So it's the highest one so far. So it goes off. We said before that if our reading was considerably out from where we needed it, that we would have to go into the back of the socket outlet. The problem with going into the back of the socket outlet it requires a visual polarity test. And then like the ring final circuit. All except so far on the ring final circuit with intolerance. And a little bit too low there. Highest reading we got was 0 0.07. Okay.